class and here we are introducing you to why you should be using LMS. So first of all, like let's talk about what who we are. So class, like we are a group of open source enthusiasts. Okay, again, what is open source? Uh, in simple layman terms, in which has the source code open and it has complete freedom for you to It has complete freedom for you to change it depending on the license. About cost, our goal is to try our best to introduce the concept of open source to Harakush Chanda. And then we do things like workshops. We recently conducted Git and GitHub workshops where, you, where we introduce you to the concept of version control and then we not only do workshops there are various projects cost maintains under the umbrella of meta kgb meta kgb is an open organization open collective like it does not mean that you are in cost then you will be part of meta kgb meta kgb is something more than this like how many of you know that meta kgb is more than just a wiki like i am assuming that you all know about that wiki or meta kgb or org exists like how many of you have used it and benefited from it like i would like a response now now how many of you have used some project of meta kgb or know about that there exists some projects more than just wiki like any tell me which project have you used a project of meta kgb which you have used and not uh, able to get it ok so which project do you know about <coughs> have you heard of jip g y f t Linux. GNU slash Linux. GNU slash for GNU is not Unix. And to 
give you an example of Unix. You must have heard of Macbeth, right? That is what Unix, that is based on Unix. Unix was, again, there was uh, MIT. Uh, they were like high advanced and technical stuff like then. Then they developed Unix, which was closed source. And there was this guy, Dennis Roberts, and he used Unix, but he was not able to use it on his own personal computer. That is when he decided solely to create this project, which you will be installing tomorrow, and which we will be talking about today. He solely started it, and when it gained population, uh, popularity, then, okay, more works. Then people understood it, the importance of it. Because we talk about what closed source brings, uh, what closed source takes away from you and what open source gives to you. Uh, GNU is not Unix, like, it is a recursive like, acronym. Now I would like to invite Professor Jeevan Jyoti to take over the control. When the boss guys, so, uh, good afternoon, uh, so when the boss guys came to me, I proudly uh, told them that I am not going to use any slides. So technically this is not slides, I am using also here. It is basically a bar button folder and I am using a plugin. So never mind, it is not open source. So I am already a good player. Uh, but it is free. Uh, so this is a uh, talking for today's talk. And, uh, we had already gone for it uh, and uh, tweeted about it and I have proclaimed to the world that I am not an expert which I am not really. So the vibe of my talk will be that I am very honestly a daily user of Linux. Okay. Actually, it's not that just for fashion I am coming here and thinking about the guru who thinks about Linux. I actually use it on a daily basis. But do a look at with Linux. So, uh, what this guy showed me was that because I use it on a daily basis, uh, to tell you about my daily experiences. As a lay person, I do not contribute to any kind of open source software development, so to speak, but I use quite a few open source software applications. Uh, so, let us begin today's talk and uh, I will try to round up uh, the discussion to a back and forth, which is how I like to actually conduct the classes. Uh, so, a deep personal experience. So, in case you have not figured out, I am old. So, uh, I started using computers using Windows 98. Okay. So, there was a Windows 95 also. I have seen it in my school computers and never touched it. Uh, but Windows 98 I touched. Okay. So, I also learned how to program C using Windows 98, little bit, besides Linux, it was here. Uh, and I got all my school results, my 10 results, my 12 results, my daily results on the Windows 98 computer. Okay. But then there was a big thing, uh, I did not buy computers in my first year, second year, here at KG. They were poor computers, because it was really expensive. So, in the, in the summer after 2000, uh, after my second year, I got a computer desktop and uh, that was with me this year. And I used that for in my fifth year. Uh, my first laptop I got during my PhD, that was a Windows 7. I have put down the entire history there. It's not very exciting, but I am just trying to uh, present you because uh, many of you will probably go through a similar sort of experiences with the shift of computing with regards to the Windows version. If you started with Windows 11 now, I don't know Windows 20 will come up because they, I don't know what, how, what is the basis of logic of their company. So Windows 7, 8, 10, 11, 20, 9 go. <laughs> then in between, uh, back in the day there was Vista, it was Crack. Uh, so many things like this happen with Windows. We don't understand but you fix it. So when I, this uh, my, uh, First proper experience with Linux, so to speak, was maybe in the winter of my third year. Uh, when I tried my best to get it installed during during with Windows and uh, ran into all sorts of problems. But the main thing which put me off was that I couldn't use DC++. 
Okay, so back in the day, there was no Netflix, there was no Amazon Prime. So the only way you could watch movies was pirated movies. Because who goes to movies in Malay? Uh, so DC Clusters was the lifeblood of our case series. And DC Clusters really did start on when I was a kid. So I start to Windows. I did all my movies and everything in Windows. Uh, in my PC, I bought a little bit with Linux, but my real first proper day to day experience with Linux was during my post work. So, interestingly, when uh, on my post work, I went to Oxford, the Mathematical Institute, and I found very surprisingly that the entire Mathematical Institute at Oxford, the entire Calvin Walsh building, uh, they had Google to install all the computers. So, all the PhD students, all the master students, all the postdocs, all the professors, most of the professors they used Google, the few professors used Mac. Okay, so that was an eye opener. But the thing is, uh, okay, I'll come back to this one. Uh, and then uh, when I started my faculty position here at IIT Bharatpur, I was in, uh, initially using Windows, but then uh, some things happened, and then uh, maybe in the middle of the pandemic I decided to change. So, first of all, this is from a library. So, see, this is my first uh, big browse. So, the older versions of Windows XP, uh, Windows XP was a brilliant I mean, piece of software. I don't know if you have ever <coughs> seen it, maybe it's an old movie you can see. But Windows XP was actually cool. Okay. I know it's probably not correct to say these things in, in, in a fast version, but it is cool. Uh, but the later versions, I don't know what they did. Windows 7 was still pretty good. I did it. I used to my uh, PhD. But what happened with Windows, I don't know, from Windows 8. First of all, they, they somehow managed to hide the power button. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a challenge. Where is the way to find what to Where is the power button in Windows 8? And then now, uh, Windows 8 came back uh, in a somewhat different form. But I started to notice that Windows XP was kind of very consistent in its good things and its bad things. So if, it was, if it was bad, I knew that this is bad, I'll deal with it. If it is good, I accept that I'll use it. But Windows 8 has very terrible little kind of The good things suddenly become bad, and the bad things all suddenly disappear. I simply do not get better feel of it. So I started feeling more and more like I have bought the computer with my money and I am like a guest in my first, in my own personal computer. What the hell? Like seriously, what the hell? So why am I the head post to say this? But the good thing is, starting from my uh, PhD days, I had started using some applications, some software, uh, which were open source. So I tell you about those things. But mostly for writing papers. So PhD students write papers. Okay, that is the currency of academia. So almost like more than 50% of my papers were written using Git and Git. So I was able to use Git. And when I went for my postdoc, I found that everyone was doing that in the math department. So I also did it. Only the operating system was doing, but nothing else changed. Okay, and this is a very, very big one which I will read with a number of times. See, irrespective of the operating system, it is a wide enough uh, talk, but irrespective of the operating system, ultimately it boils down to what work you are actually doing. And you are actually doing to do your work, not in some nebulous space of the, of the operating system, rather on some specific piece of software. So if you are able using that software, whether it is on Windows, or on uh, on Linux or Linux or Mac OS, what difference does it make? Okay, the ultimately, at the end of the day, your job is to get your job done. Is it not? None of this matters. Really. Okay, but Linux is good. We'll talk about it. So when we migrate, when I migrate, when we migrate to Linux, it was relatively friction based, and this is important to say. Okay, relatively friction based. Because picture will always be there. It will always be there. If you change your house, there is friction. If you change your damn pillow, it's friction. If you change your bed, you don't get to sleep easily. It's friction. So any change in your life is bound to create friction. So I mean, today's person, for instance, is thinking of changing over to Linux. 
uh, and you can change the version of Windows process creation. So, of course, if you are going to change to Linux, it will cause a little bit of friction. But how related is this? Okay. So, uh, and some other uh, points was that, uh, well, how the Linux do this? So, I have been running around with Linux since my undergraduate days. What happens if I do this? Then nothing bad has happened. Uh, of course, you can have an input of blank points. I don't know how important that is. Uh, boys, it will not help you get girlfriends. Girls, it will help you get boys. Especially if you are learning things like this. <laughs> so, I leave it at that. So, I already touched up with this. Uh, what are your main activities? This is very, very important, which is why we shared that Google form and asked me that question. So besides your routine activities on that connected computer, what is some, what is that something which you actually use it for? Okay. Besides the routine activities, besides your assignments, besides writing up a piece of text, what is it that you actually use it for? Is it for programming? Is it for graphical? Is it for uh, one small thing? What is it? So based on that, if you take your decision. It's not that you guys can do us. It's very clear I should value it. No. Okay. So take a step back and take a break. Uh, and which software's applications best serve your purpose? This is very, very important. Because, see, uh, I've told this to the boss guys, so let me agree with you. Open source software is great. I love it. But, open source software is not a good thing. And boss is not a club. Okay. <laughs> We're not asking you to change your religion and abide by thing. It's a practical thing, it's a technical tool. If for a particular job in which you are interested, it doesn't help you in the months, don't go over to the But for most things, if it helps you, then go over to the It's a very practical thing. You don't have to join in a new thing. And if you want to have the best of both worlds, have it going through that idea. Okay. So I think those guys will help you uh, with a good thing, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is my personal philosophy. I love open source software and as far as it allows me to get my job done, I will use it. But if I find that something I cannot get it well done in an open source software, I have no qualms about using, about buying and uh, using a product of software. Okay, so it's a practical thing. Um, Alright, so what my actual activities, what do I use? So this is something which I have been uh, asked to talk about. Uh, so first, at the very top of the list is to because I am a faculty member, my job is to write. Okay, write my lectures, write papers to my PhD students, write various things uh, for admin purposes, write and code to other professors. So most of that takes place through my either my email or <coughs> it is me. It is not with me. Uh, and for actually writing papers, I use data. So some of you may know about this, some of you may have heard about Overleaf. So Overleaf is the new kind of thing which is cloud based, much much before native, and much much before Overleaf existed. Much much before that, when it was called uh, <coughs> IKB. Uh, the older name of Overleaf was IKB, and it's called the version which were dated. I know a lot of this because I have been through all So uh, there was nothing. But what existed on your local machine? So what existed was the compiler for native, which I use can learn. Okay, and it helps you to write uh, professional communication quality uh, articles. So I mean, it's a good way of how you use it. The third thing uh, which I have written here is uh, I'll just show a little bit of these things, but since I'm the pro talking and finish now. So this girl of plus plus is a proper free and open source software, it uh, saved us during the pandemic. So, it is what I use to write up my paper. Okay. So, all my video lectures, all my live sessions of classes were done using this piece of software. And the uh, interesting thing is, Zerda Plus Plus, they don't say anything about its compatibility with uh, uh, sorry, not the, the, the pen tablet which I use. They didn't anything regarding its compatibility with Linux. They made a big fuss about how you have to go about setting it up and 
windows, uh, you have to get the coordinates right and then adjust all the dimensions and you make a day. And then on separate type of project will not work on Linux. Do it before I did not have to do anything. I just plugged it in and started writing. Nothing. Absolutely, honest to God. From my paint tablet, I did not do anything. Got it from Walker, it plugged it into Linux, I just started writing. Didn't have to do anything. I didn't understand why it worked, but it works. Okay. So the uh, other thing is this Inkscape. So Inkscape is basically the four times version of Adobe Illustrator. Okay. So till now, this four months version has served you already. All the papers that I have written, all the schematic diagrams that I have drawn, many of the uh, papers that I have drawn for my lectures, they are using Inkscape. And Inkscape is available all over the most of the countries. I learned it by using Windows, and I have seen this migrated to using it on uh, Linux. I can use this for this Okay. So, and uh, this next piece of software forms up, it is neither free, in, uh, not as in free lunch, not as in uh, single, uh, and it is certainly very expensive, but I use it because it is the best tool for my job, okay, for my research. Uh, it's a hundred element piece of uh, hundred elements uh, in software. Uh, my students use it daily, and I have good day to use it daily because it is truly the best piece of software for the job I have. Uh, I learned using Comsort during my course work on the Linux machine. So it very much works on the Linux machine. Okay. So if you are uh, interested, you can also use it. Uh, back up, uh, back in my PhD, uh, I had uh, researched at such a level of efficiency in back up that I could almost code in it blank code. Uh, it's a great piece of software, no doubt about it. It is again not clean, not proprietary, uh, it's a great piece of software. Get the chance to learn. Okay. As engineers across different disciplines, it's always very really different. But after the beginning of faculty, I thought that maybe we can try something else. And uh, since around uh, 2018, I have been using Python. Uh, seems to work pretty fine. Okay. Working uh, as an understanding. Uh, the good thing about Python is uh, it is a very general purpose programming. Language. And it works routinely for uh, mathematical purposes and scientific purposes. Okay. So whatever I need it for, uh, it doesn't do it. And the best thing I, I like about Python is that uh, since I am a teacher, in many of my courses in mechanical engineering, I use Python to demonstrate many of the law derivatives using similar Python. And the wonderful thing there is. If I use Jupyter Notebook, I can intersperse the code with the markdown comments. Okay? I can even uh, include data uh, with it. So, markdown plus data plus Python code is a wonderful combination for each of the other ones. If you have ever used Jupyter Notebook, I think you will understand what I am talking about. Uh, next, as I said, markdown, I use it almost daily. LibreOffice. Uh, it's a poor as version of MS Office. Uh, if you're working on your own, you never have to use MS Office. So there is there are things like Open Office, Libre Office, these things. Uh, you can get your job done. The problem that arises is that, truth be told, the Linux community is still very small. And most of the rest of the world they use Windows. Basically, they don't use Windows. So Windows is basically just a platform for them to use any office. That is the truth. That is absolutely the truth. Computer means it's a typing machine. It is not a computing machine. It is MS office. MS office needs to be placed somewhere. That box is called Windows. This is the rest of the world. Okay. But I think as IITs, as technical people, we are a little bit better than that. Okay. And there is no job description in the world where you need to prove your efficiency of MS Office other than being a government servant or a government clerk, where you will probably be asked about your proficiency in MS Office. But I don't think you want to become government clerks. Okay, so we are good here. But even in scientific uh, endeavors, sometimes this becomes a problem if you don't use MS Office. 
It was a document created in NS office. Does it gel office very well with LibreOffice? office? The committee goes all the way back. But my suggestion is that if you are placing a doing uh, older, the your collaborators will be there, it's not the HCM dinosaurs that we are. So probably if you use more users, you can use Google Docs. So go no patient at all. And then finally you can submit whatever you need to submit using this class. Uh, does anyone know about Pandora? Yes? What is it? Except for Cosmic. Basically, I mean, a uh, conversion tool. Okay, from one contract to another. Very easy to use. So, what I do is, I on my course websites, I write my files in markup because I'm very really lazy. Okay, can't take myself to uh, dive off the tags to HTML. And then using Pandora, I just convert them to HTML and send them to the client website. Okay. So, all my courses have a course website. This is the way I create it. First, I have a very really cute that markup file and then using backup, change it to HTML, push it to the client website. Again, uh, of course, I use it. Uh, and Obsidian, as you see, this black box this is Obsidian. Okay, this is basically a note taking tool. I'm not going to show any of my other notes because it's great. Uh, and for able to use on my uh, computer, uh, I use the Lattitude Club here. This is the Lattitude Club. So we put on transparency so that I can go uh, So uh, I think, uh, does anyone know about I think? I'm not talking about poor I think and poor I say. <laughs> so you see, when you open windows, just uh, when you open the uh, that purple color thing comes, right? And different, different versions have different angles of it. So my version had that elevation. Okay. So that is what we call the desktop. But there is something called the desktop environment, which bags everything together. Okay. Like banner on the top, where you can see the date and the notifications, okay, the weather, the Dropbox is running or not, these things. Uh, if you have the banking things also, all of this uh, is combined as a desktop environment. So what we usually see on Ubuntu, that's a GNOME desktop environment. What I basically done is to replace that GNOME desktop environment because Linux is entirely customizable and I have replaced it by something which is more basic, what I do. Uh, I had to write a few pieces of scripts by speaking from here and there, uh, but it works. Okay. The good thing about this IT is that even if I keep on updating my Ubuntu, because just like Windows keeps getting updated, uh, Linux also keeps getting updated. You can give it a little version stuff. But if I have this ID, I do not have to worry in the day I die. Okay, it is always going to look like this. So, uh, this is what this ID. Okay, that desktop background, okay. So that can be used by anything. If you want the generic, you can give it back. Uh, but it is always going to look like this, no matter what goes on with the actual operating system. And I think it's just one window manager. These are called window managers. This is this is just one window manager. You have lots and lots of other window managers. But I'm like this. Same thing. This is uh, again a free and open uh, source piece of software. Uh, which helps me to completely mirror my laptop with my office desktop. So if you are working on multiple machines, uh, you can set it up once and forget about it. As long as you have the internet, it will automatically sync. And the good thing about syncing is that uh, it is not cloud based. So unlike Dropbox, your files are not getting transferred to the cloud and then from the cloud to the other computer. That it is just peer to peer between the two computers. Without any uh, By the way, same thing works perfectly well with Windows also. And it works perfectly well with the Windows machine and a Linux machine also. Okay. I've tried all of them, so no problem. And uh, these are the things the Ranger Kunan came up. Can anyone know what are these? Why is it? Are you part of course? Okay, so you want to go 
so uh, in Windows, what is the name of the file manager? Uh, Windows Explorer. For something called Explorer, right? Uh, sometimes it crashes. When it crashes, you have to open the, the task manager and uh, type in explorer.exe, so then it starts. As does it millions of times. Okay. So uh, it doesn't give you too much customizability. Maybe you can change the colors here and there. Uh, but in Linux, as I said, there is no end to the customizability and the flexibility and uh, how much options you have. So even within the same operating system, you can have simultaneously so many uh, different file managers and so on. One of them is called my computer. Okay. So I choose whenever I think if you choose. So it's very promiscuous behavior. Okay. In real life, don't behave like this. Uh, finally, for teachers, because I am an academician, I have to deal with teachers. Uh, for normal viewing, I use Zaruda, which is a very lightweight, very simple kind of uh, video equipment, and you can have many other things. Okay. Uh, this is something which I use because the key bindings are the same as in the and I like them very much. So, uh, it's there, and often there is something which I use to give presentations. But of course, it's a PDF video also. Uh, that's it. And PDF validation is uh, uh, basically I have used it for this purpose. Uh, make the Mr. Mr. question paper, submit it to the academic section. At the time of showing the access scripts and to share the solutions, so the question paper comes and the solutions I made, combining the files from me and the other professors from the other section. So all of these files have to be compiled, right? So PJ Valenzian is for that. So of course you can uh, if you have a big enough file period, you can read files from in between, read pages from in between, add pages in between, rearrange all the things. Okay. So basically you can take jumble uh, jumble along with the PJ files in PJ Very useful. Uh, so this is the software studio. Uh, some of you may know that I uh, post uh, videos occasionally on YouTube. Uh, on my Android, I have this open camera because that is the one which detects my voila microphone. Uh, I, I didn't start with this, but I think it's getting uh, it's getting good. So OBS is basically the screen recording software that I use. Uh, it was wonderfully useful to do the practice and uh, for recording screen, uh, otherwise it is useful. Kaden Live is a very nice free and open source uh, utility software, uh, good, which I mostly use for making my content, but it is a poor man's version of the program. Uh, when I say the poor man's version, we are not taking the very negative steps. It is in the sense that you do not have to actually pay for it. It is officially free and open source. And uh, for most of the things which a normal everyday user would have to use, you really do not need the entire depth and power of having to Photoshop or everything else. There are certain things there which no other software can do as well as they can do. But for layman users like us, we really don't need that power. We are not graphics artists. At least I am certainly not. Okay. See my thumbnails are little bit lower. My level of graphic artists. So for me, paint is more than normal. I could probably do that in paint also. Uh, and audacity <laughs> is uh, uh, well, it's a audio editing software. I think audacity is no longer free and open source. But uh, I think that's been required by somebody who doesn't believe in free and open source. And uh, it has now been called, uh, like old velocity, uh, I think it has been called to Orientalist, which remains clear in this case. Uh, I thought I just So, finally, our prescription for Windows uh, migration to Linux. Uh, don't jump the ball. Okay, if you're using Windows or if you're using Mac, uh, first of all, go for a Google tomorrow. And uh, for your day to day, practice in the middle of the semester, if you start forcing yourself to uh, use Linux maybe from one day, that is not going to happen. Because if you are very really accustomed to using the applications and software which are native to Windows, you will not be able to make the jump. So after then, after what do you do? Look at the jellyfish. But 
is not the purpose of using a software operating system, right? You have to use it for some real purpose. So if you are if the thing that you do in Windows doesn't have a counterpart in Linux, then what is the way to do? So first, my suggestion is that if you really want to go start a migration from, from Windows to Linux, first learn a few pieces of softwares and applications which run both on Windows as well as on Linux. For example, Win. Okay. Uh, for example, Lady. For example, Win, which was beautifully in Windows also. Uh, for example, Inkscape, which was beautifully across platforms. So learn those things and then maybe migrate to Linux and then you will find that it is really the friction based However, you will still have to figure out the few things. Okay, I am not talking about the few things where instead of the left, you have to think of the right to close the window. Not that kind of friction list, but some of the baggage things you have to get against. So this is how basic you do and please keep doing good. So this was my uh, uh this was my talk. Before I go about asking your questions, I will actually show okay, a few things. So let me go back to the slides. Uh, so first of all, Bill. Uh, OBS now. This is the file. This is the specific question. 
because this is just a clear thing, but the equation will actually start from a little bit below. So, that's the real situation, all of these things. But I don't want it to set it up like this, because, see, this is data file, this is just a text file, and it's very basic. I have to compile it to get my PDF, I can show you the PDF. Okay, so, this is the question. Anybody know data in there? Very hard in this, right? Alright, so I don't want you to do like this also, side by side. Okay, I can do it, but I don't want to do it like this. So what I want to do is I want to go to the terminal. So please note that I have not gone back to the terminal. I am still within my file manager. Okay. From inside the file manager, I have gone into the terminal. Okay, I have not gone back to the terminal. So if I just exit from here, I go back to the file manager. I don't go back to I don't close the terminal. So uh, here I am. Now, this is where the custom integrity of Linux comes to the code. See, usually what you would do is to open up it, to open up the ms file, write something in it, and then come out of the bin, compile it, and then see the PDF, and then go back and forth like this. But we don't have to do that. All of these things are completely repeated. And if something is repeated, you cannot do it. So that is what I have done. So the name of the file is like this. So this command that I am using, it is not something related to the It is my script, set up that thing, maybe three, four lines. Okay, very simple. And if I write like this, what will happen is, so three frames open up. Now this thing, the, on the right, where my cursor is, that is the latent LA. So if you don't know about latent, so it is basically something which comes in the background, and every time I edit and save my text file, it automatically gets compiled. Okay, so I'll push it to the background because I think I'll just follow up this one. Those who do get the joke will get it. Um, now that it's see this, right? It's pretty large, but I can reduce the font size like this. Okay, you can still see it, right? Now let's say something. Suppose I'm very lazy and I just want to change. Uh, I want to uh, make the same question paper for the next batch of students for now in first year, for next year. So what do I do? I just change the date there. So very simple, I just change the date. September 20, uh, 24. So, and then I'll see. Okay. So you can see here if you can change or not the date. September 20, 24. Okay, I'll see. I just saved the file, I didn't compile it separately. So because that thing is running in the background, it is getting compiled. Now, many of you who use Visual Studio and other new finder things will say, what is this? Please get out of it. Okay. But uh, I like this thing because I made it on my mind. Okay. The setup dot thing nobody asked me to write it. It was something in a use case which suits me the way that I think, which is very natural to my way of working. And so I wrote it, and uh, there was no patient about it. Alright, so all the things which I used to do manually, I just put it in a script. That's it. Let's close this. By the way, I'm not going to put this question in the script. <laughs> So even if you zoom into it, the quality doesn't 
it's not good practice. Any of you uh, have ever faced any problems regarding this? Uh, you feel what I'm talking about. Okay. So it saves actually in the density format. And it is pretty strong. You can find uh, YouTube videos on it where they go to town making absolutely fabulous uh, things using this scale. Uh, I'll learn this because it's not an easy to do here. Uh, what else are they talking about? Uh, yes, I have already shown you, I have shown Zanda. So, this is the thing. Okay. I don't have my pen tablet with me here, but uh, see if I can you know, use my mouse you know, my touch right on I can just drop my hand on it. I can uh, draw uh, things on it. Right. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Uh, if you have a pen tablet, uh, and you are a good artist, you can do that in here. Many of my lectures, I mean, almost all of my lecture videos in uh, YouTube are made using this software. And it works perfectly well in YouTube. Okay. So if you are uh, thinking of my to the next this might be one of the softwares which you start using in Windows first. Uh, also, I don't have it here, and this will probably be easy to my research. Uh, Mac, as you all know, so I won't go to. I think most of you know it much more than I do. Uh, does anyone not know about Python? Well, you have heard about it. Not the app, not the purpose. So, we can discuss. Uh, Markdown is not really a piece of software, uh, but I like it so much I do it as a bullet point. Uh, LibreOffice, I think so. I don't use it too much. Um, but since this is one of the major reasons to use. Uh, it helps people from doing so. It looks almost like LS Office, but it is not LS Office. Okay, and in LibreOffice, uh, with a very simple plugin, you can uh, type mathematical equations also. I don't use it because anyway I use data for that, it is too natural for mathematical types of it. Uh, but you can write like this. Okay, and uh, see, there is always this uh, kind of a allegation against Linux. Then it is meant for actions. If you are not doing anything serious, then Linux is fine. But if you are doing something serious, then you have to use MS Office and Windows, or you have to use backwards. Uh, but it is not like that. I am the living proof of that. Because uh, using Visa <laughs> Office, I wrote an actual uh, public proposal to the government of India. We want it. We want the money. One GRM is actually worth it here. Okay, because of all of this. I'm not saying leave the office every to get the thing, but it was a serious piece of work when it was done on the office. It was perfectly fine. Okay. So please I uh, mean get out of the idea that uh, I mean, you cannot do serious things in this. What would be more important than sending question paper for the ideas? Okay, for my part of view and writing papers, which helps in my career progression and my students' career progression. So, uh, there's nothing to demonstrate in the but maybe I can show you my own website. Uh, this is the course website on the mechanical guys know it. Okay. Uh, this is entirely written in Markdown. Okay. Of course, I use a CSS file, um, but uh, it is actually written in Markdown, and uh, the way it was converted to HTML file was easy to find out. Excellent. So, this is also a serious piece of work, right? I mean, in terms of the significance and the importance it has for students. So, uh, and once again, is this. Like piece of thing that you see, uh, I'm also using it for presentation. 
Uh, and I think we have already seen IP is this basically the platform which is working. Uh, same thing, it basically looks something like this. Uh, I don't think I have an office that is a form, but uh, I'll show you what the UI looks like because the UI is Uh, the UI is basically shown on the project. You know, a piece of software is there. So all of these things that you see here, this is same thing. Okay, all of these folders that you see, that have workshop, demo, and data, and all these things, these are basically the names of some file folders or directories, as you call it in Linux, which are present on this laptop and which are currently mirrored on my office computer. Okay, as long as I have my uh, internet. It is automatically saved. And I think, if I remember correctly, it is based on a very old piece of software called RSync, which is completely familiar with this. Uh, so, if you are a little bit familiar with Unix, I think it is also present in Mac. So, RSync is there. Um, and, major, uh, I have already shown you this uh, plug. See, I am a little bit lazy when it comes to these things. So, so software, it can be reminded uh, to be much, much prettier than this wide and gray uh, voting uh, simple thing. Uh, I have not done it. Okay, because it suits my job fine. I don't have to dice it. Uh, whatever you do in Windows, it can do it. That's it. There is no other story here. Uh, Uh, so, I have already shown you the, so the, uh, this is a question paper, the thing which I showed you on, that was Okay, and uh, I'm not going to open Ocular necessarily, it's just an application uh, uh, software. So, let's go forward. Uh, open that was there on my, uh, on my mobile phone. OBS is what you see running here. This is OBS. Many of you probably are familiar with OBS. Sorry. Okay. Live, I can show you. This is again, I, I think it is free and open. It is certainly free. I am not sure if it is open source, but I think it is open source. So, uh, all my YouTube videos are edited using this. That is the top five. It will not have infinite number of videos to make it extremely uh, exciting. But uh, a person who is more adept and interested in video editing can go to download it. So many splashes and water effects and all those things can be done in that like one which is uh, you'll find it, many of you already know. Uh, anyway, the good thing about most of these are they are extremely light. As compared to their proprietary versions, they are four times versions, but they are also very lightweight. So they start up quite a step. Alright, so these are the things which I mostly use. Uh, I take questions. Uh, so please guys will take off your questions. Uh, and trust me, they are much more knowledgeable than I am. If you have questions like why you should migrate to migrate from Windows to Linux. Uh, and the things which you need to keep in mind, they are very, very knowledgeable. So, trust them. Uh, one thing I will uh, share, however, especially for the non servicer guys, is that uh, if you are interested in getting a job as a uh, solids monitor, basically a CAD, CAD specialist, then don't go to Linux. It's as clear as that. In Linux, you have a number of clear open source things, like pre calendar good things, but they are nothing in comparison to what SolidWorks is. SolidWorks is, it will have to know SolidWorks if you want to get that sort of thing. Okay. And if you have questions regarding going in, I am the last person in the world you could be asking for. Okay. Even as an undergraduate, I never gave you. So, we had DC Plus Plus either, I played a lot of text those games there on DC Plus Plus. Uh, but never disease. Anyway, 
Thank you very much.